welcome or welcome back to my channel. We will be finishing the advent calendar in this video, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll link the playlist down below in the description box. Make sure to check that out. Right here I'm showing you how I'm adding the hang, like it's kind of, it's a thing that you hang it on the wall, so it's a cording. And it's a pretty thick cording. I think I used, like, I think I used a whole six strands. So a yard and all six strands, and then I made cording out of it. And um, I will also link my cording video. Um, so you guys, if you don't know how to make cording, or if you do need help making cording, I made a video for you. So make sure to check out that video. I should link it somewhere up in the cards. So if you need that, that's up there for you. So I'm just knotting this really, really good, because this is really the only thing that's holding up the entire wall hanging and the wall hanging itself is not like extremely heavy but it's got some weight to it so you want to make sure that you're nice and secure so that looks good and i'm just checking on the pockets Okay, now we're moving on to the ornaments. So we're going to just look at these. Okay, so we're using pale blue. Just grabbing the yarn or the string, the thread, whatever it's called. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and we're going to um, add embellishments to the snowflake. And I sped up most of this video because it was super, super long. So I tried to condense it as much as I could without cutting like any information that you guys need to know. So we're just doing an outline stitch with the blue, the red. And um, this is optional. Uh, I know a lot of people like to cut pieces out before they put any of the... Um, like any of the embroidery on, but I find that with smaller pieces, it's easier to grip. So if you have bigger hands like myself, I find it a lot easier to work with when, when um, with smaller pieces before I cut them out. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Otherwise, feel free to cut them out and embroider them cut out. So it's really up to you. All right, so now we're gonna add the beads and sequins. I really do feel like the beads and sequins bring it out like the the snowflakiness out so I'm just gonna add these and then we'll move on to the next okay so oh my gosh these were a pain to cut out I had to grab my little tiny tiny scissors and get the little edges because um, they were just so hard to reach with my big scissors. So pro tip, um, have a small pair of scissors on hand to get into those little tiny creases and crevices. And I'm going to go around and applique the back to the front. Sorry, I'm off camera. Darn it. <laughs> when I get into the zone, I kind of get into the zone. <laughs> but you get the idea. All right, so here are the two snowflakes and they are not stuffed. And I just grabbed a sandwich bag and I'm gonna keep them in the sandwich bag just so I don't lose them because they're little pieces and I've got children <laughs> and they will get into them. So peace of mind, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're working on the ornament, the first ornament using gold sequins with white be or clear beads. I'm just adding these on. And again, I have not cut them out. So that's just a personal preference. It's just easier for me to handle them, especially these smaller pieces. So, and I'm super, super careful when I cut them out because um, I have cut threads before, which is, it's okay. That's always salvageable. I always have Fray Check on hand. If you haven't heard of Fray Check, um, just Google it, or I can even le leave a link down below 
of the stuff that I use. Um, I usually get mine on Amazon or sometimes I can get it at Walmart. It really depends on pricing. So I honestly find the best prices on Amazon. So I'll leave a link down below for the fray check that I use. It's really handy, especially when you accidentally cut threads because it helps the thread to stay in place. Um, I've used it several times, especially if I accidentally like cut a knot. Oops, I've done that before. So if you um, put the fray check on the front and the back, it dries clear and it stiffens the thread so it doesn't move. I use it on my patches too, so it's pretty handy stuff. I love it. Plus it doesn't have any like stinky, it doesn't stink to me. Like I honestly thought it would like smell, but it doesn't smell. So another plus. So we're just working on the middle of the ornament and I'm just gonna finish this off camera. So this is what the ornament is going to look like. And I'm just applicating the middle piece. I kind of like the gold and green combo. Kind of a classic look. Okay. There's one of my kids <laughs> saying hi. <laughs> they like to do that. Um, they like to try and get in the frame. <laughs> hey mom, what you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm sewing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish this off camera. Okay, so let's see. I sped this part up because it took a little longer than I thought it would. This is a little bit difficult because um, these are, okay, I, I'm pretty sure the instructions say an outline st stitch, like an outline stitch on these tiny, tiny little pieces. And I'm like, uh, no, we're doing a straight stitch <laughs> because there's no way, like, who's gonna know, really? Who's gonna know? <laughs> Make it easier on yourself. Um, but this is like the little, I'm just hiding the tail back here. It's little pieces like these that are a little bit hard to handle sometimes. I don't know why I cut it out before I did that. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay. So we're going to add a little piece of cording and I like to just n nestle it in between, kind of sandwich it in and get, I kind of get, I give myself kind of a. A really good grip so I like to just I like to take my needle and put it actually through the cording as well as through the felt just so it's secure I know we're not really hanging it up but I really don't want the cording to go anywhere so I'm really diligent about keeping the cording in place so and now I'm gonna go around and applique these two together and I believe I stuff these just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. You can actually, and it's not, it's not required to be honest. If you don't want to stuff any of the ornaments, that's cool too. Like it's really up to you. So whatever look you like. Um, I know some people have completed kits that don't stuff at all. So I've seen some that are supposed to be stuffed and then they aren't stuffed and so they definitely lose the dimensional look but some some kits you can actually get away with it so um i've actually done the opposite uh if you go back to my i did a video on uh stocking i don't remember the name of it offhand but i can link it down below it's uh basically a stocking that's santa's face and most of, the, most of his beard is the stocking. And in that kit, uh, this, the beard itself is not stuffed. It's actually kind of layered on top of each other. And I decided, you know what? I don't really like that look. So I stuffed the beard and I liked it so much better. The beard just looked kind of empty, <laughs> you know, just kind of laying on top of each other. But I find that, I found that that little modifications here and there are definitely, you know, not a bad thing, you know, it really depends on what you want to do, so. Okay, we're finishing up with this ornament. And I will do the other one off camera, so. Rinse and repeat for the second one. If you need to rewind and watch it again, be my guest. Cute little ornament. 
and that wraps around so I'm just gonna oh my gosh this is so hard to maneuver I thought about using a uh, will a pin work oh it, it, it does work okay I was like maybe a pin won't hold it but if I put it in the right position it does its job so I always have straight pins handy I use them all the time so I do secure it on the bottom too just so it doesn't move around because if you just applicate it on the ends it it will fall off <laughs> so I just um did a couple of stitches in the front and then a couple in the back and then you should be done with the ornament this ornament and then you'll do the other one. Oh, knots don't you love them Okay, I'm just making sure I'm putting the knot in the right place. Because working with these little tiny pieces is uh, tedious. I did decide to uh, applique the top too, just to give it a finished look. And I like it better too. Trying to, <laughs> trying to do the applique stitch around the Recording was a little tough, so gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, here we go. Finished ornament, so cute. And I'll just do the second one off camera. Two finished ornaments, and we're gonna move on to the next ones. Okay, these ones. require a back stitch and I'm going really slow here even though I sped this up <laughs> but um, I'm going slow here because um, I don't want to hit the very very edge because I know I have to trim there so I get as close as I can without compromising the looks and then I just go back and forth back and forth on the back stitch and then I'll go back and finish it okay so same rules apply um, it just looks a tiny different tiny bit different so those what those look like those are really simple okay now we're on to the presents and this is what the presents look like and um, the bows. I'm just gonna cut these out real fast. Okay, so I'm showing you kind of my pattern idea. Everybody has like their own way of doing patterns. So this is just my way. It's not right or wrong, it's just, you know, the way I do things. I kind of enjoy doing the back stitches because um, they're, uh, these are, I guess technically, these are straight stitches because back stitches are very, it's very small. And these straight stitches are um, crossing each other. So I'm kind of like sewing it as if it were a back stitch, even though technically it's not. So anyway, I'm just showing you how I do it. Okay. Now I'm just going to add the beads. Sorry. Oh no, not yet. We're doing outlines. Okay, so um, we're going to do an outline as well. Okay, so basically I did the outline la like after the straight stitches because the outline stitch is kind of, it's defining the shape. So... I wanted those to kind of stick out a little bit more, if that makes sense. Give it more dimension. So, anyway, so that's why I'm showing you this way. Honestly, it's however you want it to look. 
<laughs> if you did it the other way around, I'm sure it'd be just fine. Because it doesn't exactly tell you which one to do first. It just says embroider, right? So it just says embroider it. So it doesn't say, oh, do the straight stitch and then do the outline stitch. It's not like that. So it really depends on how you interpret it. So I'm just going to do the rest of it off camera. And now we're going to add the beads. And I think I, add, I ended up adding a few extra beads where they aren't stamped. Just because I felt like um, the area, first of all, was big enough. And I just felt like it could go there and it looked fine. So why not? <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen people add extra beads all over the place and they just go crazy. Um, I'm not going to go crazy crazy, but I just decided to go and at least put beads in areas that would look fine okay so now we're adding the bow and um, I'm only adding it with beads and sequins that's it so you I'm using two strands of thread and by the way when I say two strands of thread for beading it's literally one strand doubled over and I knot the ends that's basically how I do it so I actually had some subscriber ask me about that <laughs> they're like hey um you said you use two strands and I cannot for the life of me you know fit two strands through an eye because the the bead needle has a smaller eye than the applique needle <laughs> and so I was like oh yeah just Use one piece of thread and double it over. So she's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's how I do it. And there are the cute, these are so cute. Oh my gosh. I loved how these turned out. Super cute. Okay, now we're doing candy canes. I like this style of candy cane because I don't have to do satin stitches. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> agree with me on that because oh man I've had to do satin stitches for candy canes and that is just a pain and a you know what so the candy canes are fairly simple to put together and I am using pipe cleaners I know in the instructions it says to stuff them but guess what stuffing these is a pain so <laughs> um, I found it so much quicker and easier to just use a pipe cleaner so that's what I'm going to do for these candy canes. And here is the candy cane. All finished. Super, super cute. And we'll make the other one off camera. Okay, so now we have two candy canes done. Oh man, they're so cute. They almost look real, like I want to just <laughs> eat them. Okay, so we're going to grab these and put them in the bag for safekeeping and away from children. <laughs> because they will get into them and be like, hey, mommy, these look fun. No, they're not toys. <laughs> okay, these cute little gingerbread men. Oh, man, look at the faces on these. They're so cute. We are doing French knots. Fun, fun. Who here hates French knots? <laughs> Surprisingly, I don't hate French knots. I, um, I've had a lot of people say, hey, I hate doing these. Um, I, if I had to choose between a French knot and a satin stitch, I will do French knots all day long because <laughs> satin stitches are just a pain. Um, they look great when they're done properly. And um, I have a lot of practice before I feel like I've perfected the satin stitch, but French knots I can do. So those are the cute little eyeballs, and I'm just gonna jump down here and do a little back stitch for the smile of the gingerbread. I think this one's the boy, yeah, gingerbread boy. So he gets a cute little, um, like, a, like a holly bow tie, which is super, super cute. So. Okay, done with the mouth. Okay, now we're gonna do like the the icing, and it's a simple straight stitch. And I'm not going like completely towards the edge because I still have to cut this little guy out. So, just goes, you know. Honestly, it's really up to you. You can cut him out first. 
and then do it or do it the way I'm doing it. It really depends on your preference. And these are simple, so I'm just going to do a few for you and then I'll move on to the next part. I need to redo my nail polish. <laughs> it's starting to grow out. <laughs> okay, I'll finish this guy and then we'll move on to the next part. Oh my gosh, it's a cute little tie. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so that's only, um, it's only applied with the bead. That's it. So I did not applique the leaves just to give it some um, dimension. And then we're going to stuff this little guy oh my goodness he turned out so cute okay anybody else want to make gingerbread cookies now <laughs> or is it just me <laughs> now i want to go make gingerbread cookies here's the cute little gingerbread men completely finished and ready to go in their little baggie now we're going to do the heart and the heart is very simple we're doing a bead and sequin outline and then there is a separate piece that goes in the middle and then there's a holly leaf two holly leaves and a bead so it's very simple to put together and here's what it looks like and oh man this is so cute anybody else like <laughs> okay we are stuffing these and there are two of them all right finished and it's so cute and we're going to make two, so I'm going to do that off camera. And now we're going to move on to the drums. And these are a little bit, it's kind of like a puzzle, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which, which one goes where, so. Okay, I sped this part up um, because it did take me a little bit to do the drums and we are doing cording and you can thread cording into your needle. How you do it is um, you take a separate thread and um, you thread it through your needle and don't knot it and then you um, thread it through one end of the cording, doesn't matter which end, preferably not the knotted end. So, um, cause the knotted end goes, you know, um, that's how it stays. So, and then, um, you pull the thread through the needle, through the eye of it. Um, and then you use that. So it's very simple. And this, this cording is rather small. So I'm actually able to fit the actual cording into the eye of the needle, which is pretty helpful. So, okay. I might make it like a separate small tutorial about that just to, you know, it's hard to, it's easier to show you than it is to tell you, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm just showing you the step-by-steps -step of the drum. And I'm just going to cut out this bottom part. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to attach these with beads and sequins first. There we go. And then we add the backing. That was simple enough. It looked, it looked, it looked a little bit more complicated when it was in pieces. <laughs> okay, there's the drum and the other drum I will make off the camera. And on to the candies, which seem pretty simple, so shouldn't be too difficult. Okay. So I'm just showing you how I stuffed them because in the in the instructions it doesn't really I mean it tells you to applique the ends and then leave the middle open to stuff so that's basically what I did. So I only stuffed the middle section and I started on the top of one end of the wrapper, went around, went on the bottom and then went around again and then stuffed the top. If that makes sense. I found it the easiest way to do it. And I like the way they turned out, so ta-da. <laughs> okay. Just double knotting and cutting. And then I'll make the second one. Okay, on to the lollipops. 
And again, I'm using um, pipe cleaners. They're also known as Chanel sticks. They're actually referred to Chanel sticks in the kits. So just FYI, they're the same. Pipe cleaners, Chanel sticks, same thing. I think I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> okay, so I'm just showing you how I assemble these. Because I was like, hmm, how does this, how, how am I doing this? So I'm just um, kind of gauging. So I decided to do right in the middle. I found that was, you know, a good spot, right? And I will be stuffing the top. So I'm just positioning it in the, so in the spot that I want. I might grab a pin to keep it in place so it doesn't move around. Because I want the spiral to end on the bottom and I don't want it to shift. So there we go. We're going to stuff it. And there is the finished lollipop. That looks adorable. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? And I make sure to applique the back too so it looks like it's all one piece. And we're gonna do the same for the second one. Okay, so I'm actually going back to these presents because I realized that I forgot a step. Duh. I forgot to add the bow tails to the presents. So I had to go back and I had to remove the top of the bow and put the tail of the bows on and then put the bow on. So that's what I'm showing you here because I totally forgot to grab those bow ties. I just thought, oh, it's just a bow. Uh, no, I, I skipped a step on accident. Whoops. <laughs> so that is what I'm showing you now. And now I'm going to add the top of the bow so it looks like an actual bow with bow ties, or the tails. So, yep, silly me. I forgot a step. I got too excited. <laughs> So, even I make mistakes after however many years I've been making these. <laughs> Eight going on nine years of making these kits. It happens. Okay, fixed. And we're moving on to the next one. Okay, so we've got these trees to make, and they're fairly simple. Just doing... A white outline stitch along the lines here to give it kind of a Christmassy look and then we're gonna put uh, beads and sequins on and I'm just showing you these are kind of scallopy so I do a special thing for scallops I like I start at one end and then end and then come back up and then end again so it kind of gives it a nice sharp edge if you will if that makes sense <laughs> Because if you just keep going, the sharp, like the, the scallop part, it kind of gets lost, I've noticed. So if I stop completely and then restart, then it gives a nice, nicer scallopy look to it. So I'm just showing you how to put these together now. All right, Christmas tree is done. Fairly simple to put together. Nothing fancy. And we get to do two of them. Oh, I forgot to add the star. <laughs> I actually looked back and I was like, oh, there's a star there. So I get to add a star on top. Now we can do two of them. Okay. Moving on to the bell. And um, the bell was interesting. There's like these little tiny satin stitches and then it kind of connects with an outline stitch. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna start with the satin stitch first because these are so small. It's not much of a, of a big deal. It's the bigger areas with a satin stitch that I have a hard time with. So as soon as I'm done with the satin stitch, I move down and do the other half. And then um, I'm going to continue on with an outline stitch. Easy peasy. And I don't get too close to the edge because the felt, this color felt is a little bit on the thin side. So I don't want it to fray. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side and the top. And then we're going to add this little strip which contains beads and sequins, and I'm just gonna attach it with the beads and sequins. And 
Normally I use a needle for this, but it's so small. I just need to tack down and I should be fine. And then once we're done, we'll add the packing. You can see I already finished one. <laughs> yeah, because I was uh, testing out my um, satin stitch into an outline stitch theory, <laughs> which actually turned out pretty good. So we stuff it. I'm using my pencil this time because it was just sitting right there. But, you know, either it's a pencil or a chopstick, whatever is handy, right? <laughs> and you could even use your finger if you wanted because, I mean, it depends on your hands, I guess. Pencils are just a little easier to maneuver, and uh, chopsticks are too. I love a chopstick because there's a thin end and a thicker end. So depending on what you need, you know. Okay, little bells. All right, so, okay, look at this, see? I wanted to show this in the last tutorial, but I did, <laughs> I did a boo-boo. <laughs> I appliqued the top not thinking, right? So I ended up going back and removing these stitches and then um, I sewed the sides of the pockets so that they're open. So I wanted to show you that because I'm just like, what was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. <laughs> okay, we are completely finished with this beautiful wall hanging. Thank you so much for watching and hanging in with me. This has been the biggest project I've taken on. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, please like this video if you like it and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!